today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a snare sound fat and pop in your mix. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to record a snare. So let's just do that. snare sounding good okay so that's that's a snare uncompressed nothing to it what I like to do off the bat is I already have this set up in my template but all my drums I'm going to show you here they're going to a drum group and this drum group I set up an effect send to a drum channel that basically has uh, a heavy level of compression. So that's basically parallel drums. I set that off right from the start because I find that I, I need to compress less. If I'm hearing what the drum channel bus is doing already, uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's a better way to work in my opinion. So let's just hear that snare as it is. And now let's blend in a decent amount of drum compression. But usually, like I said, people do this at the end. I like to do it off the bat. Without the drum compression and with the parallel compression. So right off the bat, the snare's already sounding better. Now, if I'm producing I usually like to blend two or three snares, one that has a full body sound and another snare that is really cracking and it has a nice high end and I blend those two together. In this case, let's just say you just have this one snare. So what are you going to do to make this sound good? Uh, parallel, we're going to treat this snare on a parallel track. The easiest way to do that is to just duplicate this track. So now we have two tracks of the exact same snare. We're going to mute this one and this one will be our full body snare and the other one will be our crisper sound. So for the full body let's start working on that. Now I'm using Softube Console 1 as a plugin. You can use any plugin that you have available whether it's the stock plugin that came with your DAW or anything else that you have. So for now, let's start working on this. Now, it sounds pretty good as it is. I'm going to just lower the volume a little bit. And for compression, it really doesn't need too much now because always remember your entire mix is going to go through a bus compressor. But we can put a little bit since this is going to be the fuller sounding snare. That's a little bit much. You know, I, I, I kind of like that amount. Actually, let's let's see what if we. Okay, so now how are we going to get this to sound full? We're going to play with the the lower mids. And actually, we could start from here, bring a high Q sound, and then so there's a lot of fullness right there. Sometimes in this range, I can get a better, yeah, usually in the okay. So if you get a high cue like that, you can kind of go through the, the frequency spectrum and listen to what is going to make it full. I usually find like 2 to 250 usually works. So that's without that. And there we go. And that's that's adding a lot of fullness to it. I'm going to roll off a little bit more of the low end. 
Yeah, so I'm kind of liking that. We could bring out a little bit of the high end, but like I said, we're going to blend it in with another snare. Okay. Now, let's work on our crisper snare. Okay, so I'm going to lower the volume on this. I'm going to increase the drive. So this is just like harmonic distortion kind of plugin that that is part of console one. But you could use like some tape saturation or whatever else you have. We're going to bring out the highs. And the high mids a little bit. That's sounding pretty good. So now let's blend those two together. I'm going to lower this one all the way down. So the volume is going to be all the way down. And we're going to bring in the other one. So this is just the first snare. And we're going to slowly blend in the volume on with the, the snappier, sharper snare. And here's the volume going up. And let's mute this one. Just a low snare and a high one. It might be a little bit too loud. Let's just bring that down a little bit less. And mute and width. So that's sounding good. Now, if you want to add a little bit of space to it, you can add a little bit of room reverb. I tend to like to add a little bit of room reverb on just a higher end snare because you can it brings out the you know the reverb a little more but I like to usually leave the lower snare dry so you're getting more of that fullness hitting you hard without the reverb and then just a little bit of reverb on the high one so let's just solo the high one and let's put a bit of room reverb on there Oh, sorry, that's chorus. I apologize. Let's check where what are. Oh, okay, we got uh, this one. So there we go. So that's just with a little bit of room reverb. Let's bring the other snare now. So as you can see, it's it's already popping. Uh, the first snare, I think it might be, it might have a little bit too much low. So let's just bring the lows down on that. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good right there. And you know, just to kind of complete this, let's just uh, let's just complete the beat while we're at it. Had a hi-hat. Oh, I forgot to record that. Had that hi-hat again. And there you go, just a very quick beat and uh, showing you exactly how to get that snare to pop and have fullness. And as you can see, uh, I didn't do anything to this, to this kick, but I'll do other tutorials on that. But always keep in mind, don't over compress 
because that is the problem that I find with a lot of up-and-coming engineers they just compress the hell out of everything and then everything sounds horrible always remember everything adds a little bit to it so like like I said we compressed that first snare a little bit the second one we we didn't at all but the entire mix the entire group tr uh, track is you know it's being highly compressed through the uh, parallel drum group so you're getting a little bit of compression from there and then the entire mix is gonna go in the end to a bus compressor so that is gonna take care of a little bit of compression as well so so that's why especially when you're using samples you don't always have to compress everything so that's it for today's tutorial if you have any questions or comments just leave me a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can if you have any requests for other specific mixing tutorials, leave me a comment as well, and I might be able to do one in the future. Thanks.